Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And we are back again, second time this week, for episode two of Andor on Disney+. Plus. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Second second of three this week. Um, I, I watched this episode yesterday after we recorded the podcast, and then I watched it again earlier on this afternoon, my time, uh, just so it was fresh in my mind, because I have I watched, watched episode three as well. Hmm. I watched uh, I watched it last night, which is good because I woke up a half hour ago. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you take you know, not even. I think it was like twenty minutes ago, um, yeah. and you were just like, "Yep, yeah, no, I'm glad that my brain woke me up." Uh, so, yeah, I am too. Otherwise, that would have been really awkward. Like, wait for me to start, and then you just sort of jumping in all groggy. I think, I think seven oh eight was the latest I woke up and remembered <laughs> that I had to. Jump yeah, on she to had a show, show today. <laughs> but that was, but that was like during light and magic. Oh yeah, 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 and and it felt like a vacation. Yeah, that whole series. Like the was show great. was so easy. It was such a relaxing time. But new Star Wars. I mean, and, and this is new Star Wars, and we're like we're progressing the plot a lot more here as well. Like episode one of the show felt like it was introducing a bunch of the characters, which was really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. You got to know uh, Ferex, the the sort of the town, the planet, a little bit better. This time, it feels like we're in it we're in that world now we we know who these guys are for yeah. the most part um and I, I like it i really like it mm-hmm. yeah. uh we got a few people to say hi to this morning uh stevie is here uh sarah is here and tristan is back with us again today hey tristan how you doing uh he's just making himself a cup of calf um which, yeah again we got calf we're getting like for a Weird. show that we are we talked about the fact that it's not doing the hey look isn't this cool stuff we're getting all of these little like EU uh, expanded universe what? books, comics, things that we know are the way that they're talked about in Star Wars, but they're getting the like actually name dropped. I think. In oh, so this stuff. is a thing that's this is a thing that's been mentioned before. Oh yeah, yeah. Calf's been around since like the Thrawn trilogy. That's crazy. I'd, yeah. I yeah. I I mean, I wouldn't remember. I I read. What is it? It's such a forty it's like years ago, thirty years ago. Close like term to. <laughs> coffee or to like you know cafe as you would in most languages it's it's yeah. it's it's just ubiquitous it makes sense that you'd use it but it's cool to hear it sort of used like in context mm. uh luch johnny is here as well uh hey luch johnny how you doing um it is it is phil uh yeah sci-fi cyberpunk more than star wars see i would yeah. i was sort of going like 70s spy thriller like which i yeah. really like like um uh day of the condor that sort of thing i mm-hmm. really am enjoying it uh, yeah i don't it... even know i like i haven't seen that many of those but yeah i, I, I mean i i haven't seen that many but it's just the way when i think about yeah. those i and or like spy game the the brad pitt um it's, uh, yeah it's all just people talking but we get like we got one action scene in the first episode sort of yeah. like a, a five second long tussle and then in this one we get sort of an action scene with the flashback in the flashback yeah but it's about the same sort of scale as that one in the first but, episode but it's like kind of great and mm-hmm. i mean God, i can't for some reason twitter keeps putting uh, and or commercial as the second tweet every time i open up my app yeah it's, it's and it's showing like tie fighters and all this shit going on and i'm like no stop showing me i i saw the trailer <laughs> once yeah. I saw the trailer yep. once. We talked about it on the show. Me and Alex, um, he sat in. Um, I, I, I'm done. I don't, like, for some reason, this one, like, spoiler-wise, like, I, this is the one I'm most know. anxious about getting spoiled because yeah. this isn't the Star Wars formula, and I don't oh. know what's going to happen, and I can't predict what's going to happen. Mm. Like, we we do those Which is things. weird, because we know where this character ends. Like, it's so weird, isn't it? We, we have no idea, but we do yeah but that's what's great we've yeah. literally the only character we've seen before is cassian yeah. like no one else we've seen in the series we have no idea who they become what their fate is any of that stuff i have a theory but yeah um, uh we'll we're get to gonna today or tomorrow we'll get to it today uh, okay. it, it came up with just in like about half an hour ago when i was doing my rewatch um but, it's, but yeah, you know on. what i mean like i i don't want to see the ad. And I, I know there's going to be TIE Fighters in it. I know there's going to be Mom Mothma, but I'm good. I'm watching the show. I, I guess I could disable the ad. Or I, I, but it's, I don't want to disable it. Star Wars ads. It's like, yeah, I, I want, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm the same I, I, wanted, I, I want the one that says I've already purchased this product. Like, I'm good. 
yeah, I'm yeah. not the guy. You don't need to sell me on it. I was already in. Yeah. Um, I I get what they do in it. Like I think for for people like us, we're like that. We don't need to see any more. Like we're we're already sold. We're going to be watching yeah. the show every week. I get though for maybe casual people who are going, what is this? this is a style show. All they're doing is walking and talking. I don't really. They're not invested yet in these characters. Maybe, maybe seeing a bit of action and like being like having the promise of it coming up might be what keeps them going. But from what I've heard, like I've not seen. I mean, again, I've been quite like reserved in what i've looked at for the last couple of days because i wanted to do this show fresh but it seems like the general consensus is the most positive of anything since i don't know the force awakens can i tell you can i tell you i have a theory about that hit me because there's no star wars stuff in here to ruin anyone's childhood yeah unless you were born the year <laughs> that the 2016 Rogue came out yeah. like nobody like it's there's 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 i mean the only thing you could really complain about is i haven't seen a stormtrooper yeah. i haven't seen where's darth vader where's but it's such a like this feels like an eu book the pacing of this thing and the way it's just characters talking to each other to give mm-hmm. information like it literally feels like an eu book but in the for the best reasons like it's yeah 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 I completely agree. It's I I am so so in on this show. It's I love it so far, um, and yeah, yeah I, I have seen episode three, so I'm not going to say anything about it. But I'll yeah. I'll get to that tomorrow. But yeah, just yeah. just through episode two, I am I'm so in. Um, let's hit that theory before before we before I forget about it because we mentioned characters and how at the moment we only know Cassian. Like we, again, we know that Mon Mothman's going to be in the show, whatever. But uh when Cassian is on his little ship uh, talking to B2 and B2 is really sad. He's like, yeah, you shouldn't go like you. This is bad. Like you need to tell me where the money is for your mum, essentially. Um, yeah. And you've told me that you have to leave yada yada. Uh, the way that he's talking, the inflection in it, it's not exactly the same as K2, but there is, it, there it is feels some like similarity it. there. And we know the Cassian reprogrammed the Imperial droid that became K2SO. Do we know who's voicing this droid? It's uh, a puppeteer, one of the Lucasfilm puppeteers. Um, and doing, yeah, it's. I'm assuming it's the on set puppeteers. I don't know. I, I did they are they are they does it say the voice of or is I, it just played by I because puppeteers can get credits for yeah, characters. True. Yeah, but then they add different voices. I could it be Alan Turbic. Yeah, I don't think it is. I I think that the credit would be in there. I think people would. I would have seen it. I think because uh, I did look it up. And but the they only... don't want to spoil it. Maybe, Disney has like the power to like. Do they? I was going to say, isn't there some like legal requirements where you have to be credited or something like? No, because I... I I mean, I, if it's Alan Tudyk and he wants to keep it secret, he could keep his name off anything. There's That's all nice, kinds yeah. of uncredited, uncredited people out there. I want to say like. Uh, like Ving Rhames in is shows up in like Mission Impossible Four. Or something, That's true. Yeah, or yeah, three, yeah you and he doesn't have a credit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, he he might be uncredited for a while, but or he's, it, what he or was going talking, under there was definitely yeah. I if definitely thought something him, similar. Yeah, if it's not him, it's I feel like he's giving a performance that is informed by the K two performance, right. Like if it's him or if it's not, I feel like there is some through line there. And again, we know that Cassian reprograms that droid. I don't want to see it to happen, but we know that this show is going to cover five years. This first season's covering one year. And then the next show, the next season is going to cover like, I think every three episodes is going to be a year leading up okay. to that. Real so good. we're going to meet K2. We're going to get that bit of the story. Yeah. We're bound to. I have really fearful that something's going to happen to B2 Cassian's going to have some programming, some circuitry or something of him, like essentially his heart of the droid. And there's going to be something of B2. It's going to be like L3. Exactly. It's going to be a hodgepodge thing where he needs a module or something. And again, from hacking those droids in Jedi Fallen Order, like it's your little droid jumps up and gets in there and like reprograms some stuff. So that's all in there. So again, if it's he rips out a bit of circuitry, puts in the B2 thing. So he's got a bit of B2's personality in there. But yeah. because he's instead of being like small and diminutive and like scared now, he's bigger. So he's still got all <laughs> right. like the this is a bad idea. You shouldn't do this. 
and he's sassy to Kate uh, to Cassian in Rogue One. So he's yeah. still got that, but now instead of being scared, he's way more like aggressive because that's the type of droid that he is. Yeah. Um, I'm into it. If that is, if that's yeah, how I, it happens, I I'm a big fan of my own theory. Well, also it's great because I mean, you know, like you're like I like this droid a lot, and he's not in Rogue One, yeah. so it would be cool if he was in Rogue One somehow. Uh, yeah. But then he gets shot up, but. Yeah. Um, that's... It it makes it it makes Casey's death, which is already sad, even sadder when it comes because yeah. we've seen because we're gonna have to see it twice potentially if we see this one go down as well. Yeah, um, he seems like yeah. the sort of like good boy droid who would just like sacrifice himself for his his essentially older brother. It feels like or his mm-hmm. brother, um, because yeah, we also meet Cassian's mum in this one or his adopted mother. Right. Um, yeah. Really nice, really interesting bit of the story. He's. We again, we see the paranoia. We see him knowing that he's messed up big time, um, but he's trying to do right by his family, his his mother, his friends, um, even the people that he doesn't really like around this town. Like he's, I don't think he wants any of them hurt. Yeah. Well. Not yet. Anyway. Um, <laughs> right. I yeah. The, okay. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by the by the chat here because Stevie put this. I mean, we've got the chat's going crazy. I, I I've been sort of I was so yeah. animated with my theory. I haven't really been reading it, but yeah, I agree with it. I agree with it. I think 100. percent Yeah, there is there was 100%. there was sex in the show, like implied sex anyway. Um, yeah, it like probably Which, more so than we've ever had in Star Wars. The closest thing we've had is Padme laying in bed and. Anakin standing outside the bed, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, later yeah. having, or before that, having Anakin a one shot nightmares. of Anakin having a nightmare in bed. <laughs> like that's probably the closest we've gotten. That um, and uh, Han and Chewie in the shower. Like we never know even, about that. One. <laughs> even this, like, so we know. Like, I'm sitting here watching this, and I'm like, oh, cool! Finally, uh, there's like sex in Star Wars. Yeah, and um, I was thinking about, it, I'm like. This show isn't really for kids. I can't find any kid being interested in this show whatsoever. So I heard, like, uh, I was listening to a different podcast and there was like a, a a placed ad in there and it was a Disney plus ad. And so there was clips of Andor. they're using Andor in this podcast mm-hmm. and it's, it was UK based. So it was a UK ad. Um, yeah. Cause it's on, yeah, we've got star and we've got all of those things, but it also gives the UK rating. So in there, it would be like PG-13. I'm guessing it's PG-13 over there. Right. Um, it's it's an 18 over here, uh, which is like mm. our highest our, our rating. And it makes me go, is there some stuff coming up that we haven't seen yet? Because nothing that we've seen so far, um, either that or it was just saying like to sign up for Disney Plus, you need to be 18 plus. That might be maybe. It could be because of Star and Because like Deadpool and... <laughs> yeah, all the stuff that we've got on there. Yeah, that could be it. That I could might be, be messing it. up. But still, this show definitely feels more mature than anything we've had. But just like as far as like if I was like five, I would probably dig this because it's Star Wars and there is, you know, there's a droid. Yeah. But like it's not like it's it's it, I don't think it would if like kids it wouldn't hold their interest, I don't think. No, I, I th- it's it's the sort of thing in the same way that those those spy thrillers like are boring yeah, for kids like your dad's you, movies you like enjoy them when you're really movies. young because yeah. the, occasionally there's a gunfight and then uh, but you don't really pay attention to the rest of it and then when you're young person like developing your taste and stuff you might get a bit bored of it but then when you get older mm. you can go and watch michael clayton and then go this is amazing like right. uh or yeah. bridge of spies or any of those sorts of things like you get it um but yeah it, that movie is kind of almost that sort of thing um Harry is Potter's that horrible Andy? I'm, I'm guessing that is that who played Cassian's mum? Tristan, you'll have to let me know about that. I don't, I don't know, but uh, Stevie's been watching Rosemary and Time, and I know that it's a British show. She's okay. a great box. It's a, it's a, it's two detective. They're like older lady detectives that solve crime, but also uh, there's a gardening element to it because <laughs> <laughs> it's but, British. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but the one of the Rosemary's and or time is uh, is um, 
Harry Potter's aunt, the one that are you talking about the one that blows up and floats away? Because we went and rewatched that scene because Stevie just finished. Isn't that Willy Wonka? Time. No, is that Willy Wonka's just I guess this group is fat. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, there you go. Uh, Might be Helen. Oh, I don't think we knew that. There you go. Um, oh. talking about Britishisms, uh, the guy on the bus at the end. Oh yeah. Um, and, th- and he's just talking about them them circling, and then he starts complaining about the price of parking. And I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" If this guy starts saying it's raining today, like he is the most British person in this yeah. show, and it's full of. We talked about it yesterday about the different accents <laughs> and stuff. It's really good. Um, it because it feels natural. Like I didn't even notice it first time because it's just a conversation that strangers would spark up with you over here. Whereas, yeah, he's just complaining about the cost but, of fuck. But Stellan Skarsgård clearly does not want to be talked to on the bus. Yeah, no like, one wants to be talked to on the bus, but this guy talks to face, everyone. I made the, the artwork for this episode, his face, and you tell me, do you want to approach that face on a bus? I mean, it's Stellan Skarsgård. He's terrifying, but also amazing. So, <laughs> Yeah, um, Jeremy said that guy looked like John Aston. I thought he looked like uh, Patrick, what's his nuts, from the, the teacher on Boy Meets World. Oh, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know exactly um, who you mean. But uh, uh, he looked like um, Baldrick from Black Adder, or, or what's his name from Time Team? Uh, again, British. Um, yeah, I don't Black know. Adder, Black I, Black I Adder, know Black Adder, Adder obviously. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, Baldrick, the... the uh, Ron Atkins is um, yeah. Oh, oh you, if you just said he's Black Adder from Black Adder, no, I not Black Adder. Yeah, I think... the other one. Um, oh. yeah, um, yeah. It, it reminded me of him, just uh, you know, a few decades younger. It was, um, it was probably the hat, the sort of Robin could be, Hood hat, could be. and which... the, the, he just had a small face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I liked it. I, I thought was, the scene was really good. Speaking of accents, the uh, sort of second in command for the uh, for the security Linus Mosk. Do you know this dude? I that's the character's name, and I've just got uh, all space cops and bastards. Man, that guy um, is that guy is fuck that guy. But that guy is a cartoon character. Uh, yeah, like, but like also. Like I, I, I can't stand this guy. But in the like, it's it's so different because mm-hmm. like I enjoy hating uh, Cyril Khan because he's he feels like he's over his head, but he's he's trying so hard. This guy just feels like a bigot who you're gonna see a dash cam video of him pulling over some motorcyclist and then getting super aggressive with them. Um, yeah. Like this guy has a, a Blue Lives Matter sticker on the back of his yeah. spaceship. Definitely, like I don't know what would what would the Star Wars equivalent. He's probably got like the Mandalorian symbol, a bumper sticker or something. Like <laughs> or Death Watch, he'd have Death Watch, wouldn't he? Because he's a fucking prick. Um, <laughs> yeah, fuck this guy. Big, but yeah, he's he's a massive. Yeah, everyone's talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was okay so look, that scene we're talking about that scene just the look of it and then i realized sort of the look of this planet reminds me of uh uh mobius mobius oh, the, wow. the artist yeah, mobius the artist yeah like, yeah like heavy metal and stuff like yeah it almost like that bus like, set looked like detail. straight out of like fifth element valerian Blade Runner. Um, like a lot of this looks like Blade yeah. Runner too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of Blade Runner vibe, I think. Like especially when it has... goes to San Diego in the sequel. <laughs> yeah. The uh, <laughs> the um what the um what was I gonna say? Yeah, the whole thing looks like heavy metal. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is which I I think sort of adds to the whole like Britishness of it or yeah, Europeanness of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I, I'm all on board for because, like, you know, we get these shows, and we're it, we're in an era like people may say, oh, you know, the Disney era blank, but it's not necessarily just the Disney era; it's the fan film era. These are all filmmakers that grew up with Star Wars and want to make Star Wars. So you get Ryan Except, Johnson where he's yeah. like, I'm going to throw as much Star Wars stuff as I can into this. Uh, you have 
Filoni and uh, Favreau, like, I want to make sure that everything looks like Star Wars. So everything starts kind of looking like Tatooine. Mm. Like, no matter where you go, it looks like Tatooine, but maybe in a forest or, you know, um, the the uh, the Bryce Dallas Howard episode yeah, in yeah, the fishing yeah. village looks like Camino. Like, yeah. And yeah. it looks like, it looks like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I like that this is taking it a different direction. Definitely. You might catch a glimpse of a character, like in the back of the bus. They had the characters from um, Rise of Skywalker. With there's, the... there's a yeah, there's a few different aliens from the sequel trilogy. I've noticed. So, popping but it's nice because I think it said there are mid rim. This this place is mid rim. Yeah, or, or at least, no, uh, his uh, his uh, was yeah. yeah yeah. But I like that this doesn't look like Star Wars at all. Like from the droids to the aliens to the costumes, mm -hmm. like this is a planet and this is what it looks like. Yeah. And it's nice to sort of like freshen up the look because now you could take this design and move forward with this design and do different things as opposed to just reusing well, you the can same mix and match. Look. Like you can, you yeah. can pull elements and it makes it a bigger yeah. galaxy, a bigger world. I think a lot of that is because, you know, it was it was shot over here. It was shot mostly on sets that yeah. were built. Like, they built this town. I really like Ferrex. And again, I said it last time, uh, yesterday. But from when we get the top-down shot and we see that big wheel and we see the, the bell tower, which we'll get to because it's amazing, yeah. um, you get a good, like, lay of the land. You get to feel, like, mm -hmm. the geography of this place. And I really appreciate that. Like, I like mm -hmm. a map. I like like a top-down map of a, a location like the those cross-section books where you've got a good cross-section of what Mos Eisley looked like love those mm -hmm. so to be able to sort of see that for this place I really appreciate because you just got a feel for the geography of the place and it's it's good yeah. um and I think it's, that that opening super... shots the opening shots when we get the, <laughs> the bell tower um yeah Hunter that's that's is it is what it feels like yeah. but like one of the higher budget ones not not one of the cheap ones also the sort of the overcast the the British overcast weather. British weather is something that's undeniable like when I see a British show I know immediately yeah, it's a it's, British show it's gray here <laughs> just like just like I know Southern California mm -hmm. when when I watch anything you like mm -hmm. oh this was just shot in California yeah uh, it's like when Lost tried to make uh, downtown Honolulu look like uh, South Korea and stuff. It's like, okay, yeah. that's that's still pretty much Hawaii. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The 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 shots, uh, the the opening sort of montage, as it was, as the guy is doing doing his bells in the morning, which I I love it. The like the yeah. ceremony of it that he sort of talks like the way he's moving and how he he puts on his headphones. Like I'm guessing just for ear protection, but and then it's it feels very much like the ringing of the bells. But he's got the whole. It's almost like a dance that he does every morning, and then we see the town. It's all these people that we've either met or like we've we've seen in passing that Cassian has interacted with, and it it makes you care about what's happening everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really appreciated all of that. I thought it was really really good. It also um, feels new. Like in, in Star Wars, normally that would be a machine. Yep. Or if they had to have someone hammering it, it would be a droid. Yeah. 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 So or a big alien or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to just like see new cultures. Yeah. You know? Definitely. It doesn't it doesn't all have to be <laughs> the, the same shit like it's super like this show is super refreshing mm. and because it's a slow burn it doesn't feel like star wars there's no star wars characters and so it's like really i mean you're not waiting for the action coming. scene at the end of the episode yes yeah. yeah i know what's coming and it's gonna be nice because this is a small sort of quiet world that cassian lives in where a one murder or i yeah. guess two is like like the biggest thing that could happen anywhere is yeah. a murder that's not even on this planet but a different planet it's like his world's crumbling around him he has no idea what's out there beyond yeah this exactly place. it's so and, much bigger than so, him. yeah so when he finds out <laughs> about like when he starts getting into the rebellion and dealing with mm -hmm. the empire and stuff and he just shoots a dude in an alley because he's starting to see that 
those guys are small potatoes. Like he, he goes from regretting killing these guys to just shooting a dude in an alley. Who's and, an ally. Like, yeah. An ally in an alley. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like just because it's for the greater good. It's what needs to happen. And he um, has a hunch that this guy won't stay cool under pressure if he gets captured. Yeah. Or, or he's just going to slow him down. Like it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's rough, so, but it goes from an accidental killing and then an execution to, uh, to yeah, a, a, a murder of a friend like in the span yeah. of five years. So that I think is interesting, and the fact that like this setup on these two episodes are just about him on this planet mm. trying to survive just here. That it's going to be really exciting to see him actually show up in a star wars yeah 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 because we we every star wars movie drops you in the middle of it you're always yeah. in the middle of star wars you don't get like a day in the life you don't get this kind of stuff um and this is like the next morning this is we haven't really skipped ahead in any sort of time like yeah he's uh, the the last episode ends with uh bix sending out the message now we know that um uh, Stellan Skarsgård's got it, and he's on his way. He's he's arrived like that next day, mm. um, and yeah, Cassian talks about like with his mum. He's just he's he's telling the lie that he told his friend to tell, sort of thing, so that he's corroborating his story. So yeah, we yeah. know that it's the next day. It's it's all right there. Yeah. Um, um. I thought it was really interesting uh, that we got some translation on the screen. We talked about yesterday the the BBY for the mm -hmm. first time. Uh, this time when it's, uh, I think the guy's name is Tim. Uh, yeah, the, the jealous boyfriend, Tim. When he's looking at that screen, we get the text on screen, like translation from Arabesh. Yeah, in English. In, yeah. Which not, is... I'm, I, I was going to say basic, but I'm just saying, flat out saying it's in English. It's yeah, I mean, this is because it's for the audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it was spoken, it would be basic. Um, I mean, when, yeah, yeah when, when B2 de delivers the message later on, it's basic, but. Yeah, and it's it's good. Like this very much feels like this is Tony Gilroy who's like, I've got information that I need to convey on text and Star Wars. We can't show Star Wars. The monitor. And they're like, We we have to keep with like some continuity here. We use a, a different alphabet. He's like, Okay, cool, we'll throw some translations up. It's like it makes sense. Like, do that. You don't need to break anything because you know that people would have been getting money if they'd had text on the screen in English. Mm -hmm. Um, so and, the and it would be stupid if the character just read it out loud, like as to he's himself. discovering it. Exactly. Yeah, and it'd be like, it, I. It was funny when the words were on the screen, but it wasn't a subtitle. Mm. I was like, that's really weird for Star Different. Wars. It's so English unique. on the screen. Yeah. Ever because I mean, I grew up with the VHS tape where there and was this tractor beam, yeah. and it had yeah. English there. But it's been so long. I mean, yes, since nineteen ninety-seven, it. it changed to Arab, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just and they and they just inundate you with Orabesh in uh This show's loads like, of it. Like in uh in just all the Disney era stuff. Yeah. Like it's just every and in the prequels. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like everywhere. They locked it down in like it, it, the last series, Obi Wan, you have Reva sitting on a roof with giant Arabesh letters in neon. And this one, so as you're walking so through the streets, it. like I, I, I haven't gone, but I'm sure that uh, Alex and Molly on Star Wars Explained have a video going through all the Easter eggs and they probably translated mm -hmm. every sign that you can see. Um, mm -hmm. But it's cool because it does feel like a lived in world when you've got that stuff in there. Um, and again, in Obi-Wan, like where some of those neon slides are like flickering in and out, it's it's like there's not clean translations. It's as it would be if it was a lived in place. Um, yeah. I like it, but it, it was really interesting, but a good way to convey the text and the information that we needed to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is funny because we get it in the, like the next scene, we get it read to us, but we need to know that that is also the same message that uh, Tim was reading. Right, that he was seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's a good suggestion um, from Jeremy Kelly. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already. Yeah, we never really talk about it, but we while you guys we... are here in the chat and listening to us and watching us, go down below, uh, hit the like button. It helps the show. Um, helps also, get us, like, get us yeah. new views and things like that, which is yeah. always nice. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for all being here in the chat as well. It's great. <laughs> uh, the conversation seems like it's, it's going quicker than I can follow it but i'm sort of dropping in and yeah there is some stuff being in, put in there that is like oh yeah that's a good point i missed that yeah. um 
what about the flashbacks we got some more of the the flashback story with the the kids uh it starts off they walk past this big strip mine that looks completely abandoned right so like they have to have some sense of something bigger so right? it it looks like it it was there and now it's not yeah. there any or not active anymore it makes me go did something happen um Tristan, was, when we were talking about the uh, actors and the, the guy on the bus, uh, he, the, he was a guy from uh, Chernobyl, apparently. He was one of the naked miners. Um, but when Tristan just said that, I was like, oh, okay, maybe there was something happened. And the people that lived there were like, I don't know, indentured servants or were working in this mine for the Empire. Well, it sounds like the, the air in this place is toxic. Yeah. Yeah, very much. It could be. The so, dudes, the dudes had the mask off, yeah, came out, did. and they, they were yellowed. Um, that could the, be like an alien, though. But I think they mentioned the toxicity in the air, if I'm oh, not okay. mistaken. So these could be kids who, Are maybe immune? the miners slowly got used to the toxicity. Maybe they unearthed something that released toxins into the atmosphere. Could but be. they were down there dealing with it so much that they sort of evolved. Or and they could be people left behind, or they just don't go that way unless they necessary like they need to. It could be mm -hmm. like an exposure thing, um, but yeah, it certainly seems like if there aren't any adults around, that uh, potentially most, if not all, of the adults that were there were part of this mine that's now been abandoned, um, and that's yeah. why it's just the kids left to do this stuff. Uh, but then, yeah, they they get to the crash site, and the sort of the leader of these kids goes gives the one guy a prod. Seemed very gentle. It's like if if you want really want to check that this guy's dead, like I'd be jabbing him a lot poke more him than in the that. Butt. <laughs> yeah, poke him in the face, poke him in the butt, poke him anywhere. Like, yeah. like not just a gentle. Okay, this guy's dead. Moving on, because yeah, she got shot in the back, uh, and then yeah. they all go. They they all their sticks, their their blow darts, which I yeah. thought was really interesting. It gave me big, and the way that they just start screaming, it gave me big sort of uh, Ewok feelings. Uh, and then oh, it made me yeah, go, yeah. hang on, is this just Endor? And are these uh, unevolved Ewoks that aren't hairy enough yet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they evolved in like <laughs> 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. It'd be pretty funny though. Because uh, then we'd get yeah, Endor from scary. Endor. <laughs> oh boy, no. <laughs> no, uh, it was just, uh, just a joke that I thought of when I was watching that. Because it is that is the only other time that we've seen like a... a I don't know, a less advanced civilization uh, using things like blow darts or sticks to beat down superior forces. Yeah. Um, the the uniforms, thing. the uniforms on those guys' ships. Um, yeah, what is the symbol? It the looked symbol... like the Confederacy, like the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Um, so, okay. like, we, we don't see any droids. We normally associate them with, like, droid armies, but, like, there are there were other planets that followed Dooku that weren't just droid armies. So it could be that this is back during the Clone Wars in timeline. It would make sense. Cassian's a kid here, uh, so you're talking 10, 15 years earlier. So that would be right mm -hmm. in the middle of the Clone Wars. Um, mm. So yes, yeah, separatist symbol. Uh, Tristan sees it here as well. Um, that's what it looked like to me. That's what I thought immediately. So it looked familiar. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. Um, yeah. but again, they're not to know what that is if they haven't been anywhere. Um, but again, we've seen we we've seen the trailer where we also see the Star Destroyer come overhead. So assuming that this ship was being chased by the Empire, mm. so that would make sense, you know, that they're sort of outliers to Dooku. Mm. <sighs> um, I I I think this must be an autocorrect, but uh, Kasabian apparently says in Rogue One that he's been fighting since six one. What the band, the 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 band that were like quite popular ten years ago. <laughs> is that a is that a UK autocorrect there? I think it must be. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, yeah, he said he's been fighting since he was six. I think he's a little bit older than six right now. Uh, yeah, maybe he was six when uh, the parents all died, or the yeah. the adults all went away, and he's counting yeah. that. It's like lost. his sister. Yeah, his the sister kids. would. His sister, I'd guess, is about six here, but he seems like he's I don't know, twelve, thirteen. I can't guess kids' <laughs> ages. This this cracked me up. Um, yeah. <laughs> should, I should... Yeah, we don't know enough about it. Yet. It's, a bit, it's right. a bit early. It's a bit early to say. I think, like, 
Yeah. But yeah, she the way that she just sort of shows up at Tim's place later on felt like was she Kate just showing up at Sawyer's tent yeah. and just be like, yeah. "Hey, uh, I know I was off with my other island boyfriend, but now I want to come and was get she some was, of that." <laughs> she was was she just there to get something for Cassian so he can leave? Is she creates some sort of of a diversion. I think she does genuinely care for Tim. I think that they are a thing, but he, she's keeping Cassie in secret, and we don't know if it's her own secret as well. Like that, the, my theory there is still in play that she is also from that place. But um, Steve was saying, Steve was saying that that she's like Bix and Cassie have a past, and I'm of of course they do. They're the two most good looking people on this whole goddamn planet of yeah, course right. they do <laughs> Jeez louise like i and mean watching we're... those two together watching those two together my like, man these are good yeah. looking people just just leave the rest of it just go off and have fun you crazy kids. and they have like... Like, even the dirt or the the like the the bruises on the face are like just Done. Just the nut, Hopefully just so. just right. Yeah, yeah. It's working. She for came it, out definitely. of the yesterday, the yesterday's of episode one. She came out from under that uh engine that she was working on. Mm -hmm. Not a spot of grease. <laughs> <laughs> spot and then grease. even Cassian, when he goes home and his mum's looking at him, he's trying to cover up. He's like, Oh yeah, no, I I fell down. I was like, What onto your face? <laughs> um, it's like people are saying that he looks like a mess, but it's like he doesn't look like a mess. I know. Great. They need to give him a black eye or something. I'm like, I'm like, what are they seeing that I'm not seeing? And it's <laughs> yeah. a little like it's a raspberry. If this is, if like, this is little... him mess, what does he look like when he cleans up? Like that dude's gonna yeah. be ridiculously attractive. Um yeah. yeah so like I get Tim Tim we don't like because he is a jealous boyfriend type, and like that's never mm. a fun character to watch, but I get it. I'd I'd probably be the same in his position. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah. Tim was Tim was batting well above his station. Is that it? I, I listen. I, I, I don't want to sound like an asshole. <laughs> I don't want to sound fucking racist or whatever. Is that like a cricket? Is that like a cricket term? I I, I it feels like a mix. I like I mean, punching above your weight, batting above your station. I don't. I, it's all the same. It's you know. Yeah. She's way better than he is. He's she's much better looking <laughs> no, I, than he is. Like context, I understood what it meant, yeah. but I'm like, I, 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 if that's I don't know. Thing. I don't know if it goes back to cricket. Might be baseball, um, but baseball. I don't know what it is. I don't know what station is. I don't think we have. Like, that's the word that's cricket, throwing me yeah. off. Ah, batting above a station. I mean, I get it. I, I know. Maybe it's exactly. an autocorrect. Is that a band? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good band name. Batting above your station is. Well, the station is in. Uh, what well, station is? Bill and Ted's in, uh, Bogus Journey. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, um what else we got, what else we got? <laughs> like it's a cockney rhyming slang i don't like i'm so i i don't listen i'm not the one watching rosemary time so i kind of <laughs> my my sort of neither British of them are batting thing. above their station yeah for me it's like like i try to say petrol <laughs> to accommodate oh, no. and then like that's it um but you know what i mean like i try <laughs> i'm trying to be i want to learn these things and I, but i don't want to come off as like an asshole <laughs> it's it's so funny isn't it because you're saying that and then i get made fun of and accused of just speaking american because most of the stuff that i watch is american um oh, so yeah, i you, i use like, a lot more like americanisms where people wouldn't um like you say you're people annoying. <laughs> you say urinal instead of urinal. I, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Listen, I, you guys, yeah, you do you, but urinal <laughs> sounds so fucking wrong. It sounds, it's incredible how wrong it sounds. And there's a whole episode of Great British Pottery Throwdown that we watched, and there was a whole episode dedicated like a, to urinals. And I was like, holy, sh it's a very good show. It's it, sounds really it sounds yeah. fake. It sounds fake. It's the Great British Bake Off, but with pottery. Yeah. It. <laughs> but what do they say? Okay, so if you have HBO Max, watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you could call them whatever you want, and I'd be happy with it. But when you when you say your rhino, I'm like, that's a word that's already established. You can't change the pronunciation. It, it's fine. <laughs> but dude, the 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 Great Pottery Throwdown, dude. It's a freaking hilarious because they'll show them doing this to the to the clay on the wheel 
and it, it's very it's very like this Please don't turn this into an animated <laughs> game um but they always show close-ups of it and the 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 presenter not the host the presenter of the of the of the series um will 100 always bring it up today i learned that lucha oh. johnny is from england um <laughs> I had no idea. I, I assumed Lucha Johnny was from Mexico and was an actual luchador. luchador. <laughs> like, a, I mean, why not? Right? I mean, why not? I mean, it's in your name. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe he is. Maybe, or maybe he is a Brit who is uh, living and working as a professional wrestler in Mexico. That's the story I'm going to go with. Lucha I'm, Johnny, please don't tell us any different. That's what we're going with. I'm fine with this. Where, you, where we say herb, we do say herbs. Uh, we say her because there's an effing H in it. Yeah. Yep. I get it. That's fine. I'm fine with. It. So I think I said Herb the other day. Anyway, <laughs> there's all, again. There's only one word. Urinal. Urinal. And urinal. I think I do say like, urinal. I think you're right. I think I do say urinal. Say it so many times. Oh, I was going to bring up the calf. They're talking about calf. Okay. Yeah. And how I was so excited. I'm like, oh, they have a word for coffee, and they have coffee. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It's a plant. It's a bean. Sure, why not? But it was reminding me of the time that. Uh, they first mentioned refreshers, I believe, on Rebels. Yeah, they talked about the refresher. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, I guess we'd never heard them say bathroom or restroom, and so no. it's it's I fun remember... to now. Go on, like it's fun to have that now in your sort of vocabulary as far as Star Wars terms. Because mm -hmm. when I go to Galaxy's Edge, I like to say the refresher. Excellent. Just because I know. And with with calf, I guarantee you every single any sort of morning tweet that goes out from a Star Wars fan is now gonna have the word calf in it. And I, I I'm fine with it, but let's not make it this is the way or I have spoke let's or it doesn't need to be the catchphrase. That, one that came up in this episode for me anyway, uh when we're seeing Cassian's room. Uh, we see a little bantha toy, and it just made me think of like a bantha. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And that that's, that's another one. Like the, the let's use let's use calf casually. Casual calf. Let's not really like get in there and start like it doesn't need to be everything, guys. Please uh -huh. let me in. Uh, right right now, you're catching Ralph in a moment where he is okay with calf. You know, mm -hmm. okay with calf. I don't know why I was Give it a week. third person. But <laughs> but dude, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. It's gonna be so, a picture of Aunt Brew holding a mug and don't talk to me until I have my calf. And I'm just gonna can we beat them? Should we should I beat him to the punch? I think, and just start you, need posting calf I think you need to own it, own uh, it, own it uh, now, and then you won't hate it tomorrow. Right. Um I going back to the refresher thing, it reminded me of uh when uh, episode three came out. I remember on some forum somewhere, people were excited because they thought that there'd finally been refreshers in Star Wars. Because that's a term again that's been around since like early EU. They've referred to bathrooms as refreshers. Um, and when Obi Wan hides on Padme's ship to get to Mustafar, everyone was like, "Does he hide in the refresher?" Because like, and do we see a refresher in Star Wars finally? Because uh, I think in the novelization, that's that's where he hid. Or something, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was that was kind of it. Just reminded me of that. Whenever I think of refreshers in Star Wars, like that's what I think of now is that particular scene of just yeah. Obi Wan going and hiding and having a shit. I always think of the the. the it's rebels. Who's the who's the sort of um, the Imperial officer with the big mutton chops? Credit. Uh, uh, no. Um. Um. Uh, 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 oh my god! It's tip of my yeah. tongue. Tristan, help right? me out here. Um. It's 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 not oh, Krennic, no. it's not Cassie, it's, it's, it's a C or a K name. Yeah, I'm sure. It um, is. Uh, they, they, do that. they open an episode with a POV shot of him washing his hands in a sink, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh shit, that's a sink in yeah. Star Wars. Callus, Callus, thank you guys. Callus. Um, um, and then I think they showed a toilet. I think they showed um, a toilet. I think they did. Like Rebels was great about that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, Agent Callus was good. He's a character that I wouldn't mind seeing pop up in this show. A live action Callus. It went because I think we're going to see some uh, ISB agents. So yeah. we're going to get some of the is, Imperial Security Bureau. Filoni's not involved with this at all, right? As far as I'm aware, no. So it's up to Tony Gil Gilroy to be like, the, but if, to see what he's a fan of. 
It's no, because I don't necessarily think it needs to be. He might just have some scenes in there and he has I imperial officers is... and then story group can come right. in and go hey yes. can we have one of these guys be this guy non-consequential doesn't make yeah. any difference to the story it's just an easter egg and that's it's the that's whole right. it's the whole saga era thing where um where gareth edwards said he wants a sort of extremist rebel yeah. leader yeah sort of showing a different side of the rebellion and story group was like we have a we guy for you. Yeah. Here's this guy. We'll see if he can fit in. They check it. Yes, you're good. They run through that, and then boom, we'll use that yeah. character. That's you're not what I want for, for this. All that character. You're you're writing a character, and then going, huh? That fits with this one. Do we have that already? Exactly. We may yeah. as well tie them together. Yeah. Um. That's when it works nicest, and yeah. it's it feels the cleanest. Which mm-hmm. yeah, that's what that's what I'm all for. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Sora in the show. I really am because he's a character mm-hmm. that between other books other comics two different shows now um video games the video game yeah we've seen him at different stages even in bad batch the beginning of bad batch when we saw him again like we've tracked his level of extremism yeah um to the point where we know in rebels like he's so on the outs with mon mothma and everyone on yavin um that it's it'll be really interesting to see where he's at at this point five years earlier Right. Um, and they shot that uh, those scenes. Well, I assume those scenes with him uh, and two tubes and those guys. Uh, not too far from me. I was actually down that way in August. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's quite a nice bit of the coast where there's like some coves yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Again, bringing characters if they're established and make sense for the story you're telling. Don't bring in characters and then write the story around them. Exactly. Um, which I feel like is sort of stuff that's happened in Mandalorian. Well, I feel less with like Bo-Katan. I feel, feel like Bo-Katan absolutely works in works. that. I Perfect. don't feel like Cad Bane works in that. No, um, it was. I was excited to see him when he first popped up um, because you think, you know, Boba Fett's story, they've got some history together and everything yeah. like that. But it felt None like it of was, that a- was even it didn't it didn't wrap up satisfyingly enough uh right. i don't think um right. it's, it's but i mean we don't think he's dead now because like i i just don't think about that show really well that was two shows ago i know we and had we... a kenobi this is what's fucking nuts is people like you guys have no idea how long we had no star wars and we're sitting here i talking think the guys about, are like, here the dude, series, but, yeah the third series of uh, the of star wars shows Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett, Obi Wan. Is are we missing one? I mean, no. the fact that we haven't no, because we've had two two Mandalorians, yeah. one Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Uh, Obi Wan. Yeah. This. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. still, it's it, this is nuts, and I'm glad. I'm so glad with this show that they're like diverging from the formula. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Like as much as I love Obi-Wan and as much as I liked Book of Boba Fett, like it felt very <sighs> formulaic. And I feel like the whole point of doing a TV series of Star Wars is to serialize it, mm. is to not make, try to make like a Star Wars movie a week. Mm. Um, this isn't the Flash Gordon style I was hoping for in the serialized Star Wars. But I think I'd say Obi Wan was, but yeah. Obi Wan you could very much tell that that was originally a movie, a movie script that was just chopped into into sections. This one feels like the first Star Wars television series. It's a series of episodes that has a one overarching story. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the characters thought out. It's not uh, a, a weekly procedural like Mandalorian. Mandalorian right. has a weekly procedural with elements of a serialized storyline that run of through course. each thing, which is fine. That's kind of like similar it's, to like it's, Lost. It's the network it, TV model. It's it's like yeah. or the modern network TV since Lost, yeah. uh, which again, happy birthday to Lost, eighteen years. Um, yeah. um it's it's yeah where lost it did have like storyline of the week but there was an overarching serialized plot um yeah. which and it, we we always sort of count lost as being sort of one of those forefathers of like the peak tv era that we're still in now mm-hmm. um like yeah. that and sopranos are the ones that sort of always get trumpeted as uh, yeah. but 
Sopranos was cable, so it was, it was a different thing. Whereas Lost was with Breaking Bad, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Lost was that for network TV, and so it feels like Mandalorian is the sort of the network TV Star Wars, where you've got an overarching story, but you also, if you miss an episode, you can probably jump in the next week and get it and f- like pick up the story where you left off. Right. This one's great. This one's like designed for streaming. This one's designed for binging. There, there's no cliffhangers. Like the, no. again, this episode is literally just Cassie and just walking <laughs> through yeah. through a junkyard, and then it just cuts the end. It's, um, it's the first one of the shows. Like you and I are both proponents of a weekly release. Like I prefer a weekly release on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want the binge, but it's the first time that. Like I've got to the end of one of these episodes and gone, I want the next one now. Like I don't want to wait. I want to do the next one straight away. Um, even this, I like I watched episode three yesterday, but I got to the end of episode two before we recorded this show again. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to jump into episode three. Um right. I'm, I'm I'm fully ready. I was like, I'm gonna watch episode three after we're done recording. But Stevie's working and I gotta wait until yeah. tonight anyway. But um, you'll enjoy it more. But can I just say another thing, like I mentioned it yesterday and I'm going to bring it up again today and I'll probably bring it up again tomorrow. I'm really, really digging the music. It's great. That That, end, that end theme with the, with the drums and stuff. So, so it was going in time with his steps. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Diego Luna, is he going to keep the the same rhythm going? Are they going to have to keep up? And I'm just sitting there watching with each drum. Uh Uh-huh. It's, I'm like, it, I mean, oh, that's how I it. walk. I like, I, when I go on patrol at work, I, I have to patrol like a mile, like a few times a night. And I, whenever I'm listening to music while I'm doing that, I'm always walking in tempo with the music. And it's like, it's like he's put on this banger track in his yeah. headphones as he's walking to this meeting that he's going yeah. with. And the way that the it, score... pans down, it pans down from yeah. Stellan, uh, he's always going to be Stellan Skarsgård. I know that we know his name yeah. is like brave. He's always going to be Stellan Skarsgård. Um, mm. we pan down from that to Cassian, like going through the junkyard and it's the way he's like, he's jogging at first and then he slows to like a quick walk and it's so good. And that drum beat is amazing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think they've been releasing music on, on like Apple music and stuff. They released cool. it digitally. I'm, I'm, I'm going to download it. it. Yeah, There's some stuff in there. There were some shots of when Stellan Skarsgård was walking around the planet. Mm-hmm. Or it was before it was when he gets there. When he, I think, when he lands, yeah, yeah, Uh, yeah. It's it's real sort of like the tracks are there on Apple Music already, like calming atmospheric music. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm putting that in my sleep mix. Which, by the way, if you're my friend on Apple Music, you can listen to my sleep mix. It's available for everybody. Great. Um, I think I've got some (laughs) playlists shared on there as well. But uh, you can find us. But. Uh, it's I'm loving the music. It's so not Star Wars, which is great for this series, which is so not Star Wars. And I'm kind of gonna be I'm I'm expecting it, but if it doesn't happen, that's fine too. But I'm expecting to hear sort of this music sort of slowly as we get more into the Empire and the Rebellion, sort of slowly d- dipping our toe into like Michael Giacchino territory with yeah. Rogue One. I don't yeah. know if it's gonna happen. Um I don't well, we'll know. get some subtle themes of like some rebellion themes when we get more Mothma and uh, we'll get some Imperial themes when we start meeting other people. Um, so, and I'm fine if it's integrated well, like that, that will be good. That's the only other, the only other thing that I wanted to come up, uh, mention before we start wrapping up uh, as we're talking about Imperial themes, when Cyril walks into that room and they're pulling up suspects and stuff mm. uh, as he walks in, it's like, he's excited that they've got a suspect and they're like, oh, we're, this... we're just we're just pulling them up now. The way he walks in oh. and stares down the the mugshot of Cassian, mm. it gave me like massive feeling of um, Vader on the Star Destroyer with the that's yeah. it, the rebels are there. Like when he sees Hoth. Dude, oh, also, like great shorthand, they have the image of Cassian up the the hologram, and the 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 prostitute walks in. Yeah, they don't have a full blown scene with her, but nope. you get you get you understand. She's there. She's seeing his picture. That's the guy they're looking for. Like, they, they, it's, they it's, a short, it's still a shorthand, even though this show is such a such a slow burn. He they is do, a 
good cop. Like he's not a good cop because yeah. I don't believe there are such. But uh, he's 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 a competent officer, mm-hmm. and it's like it's it makes the scenes where he's incompetent, where he's trying to deliver that speech so much more stuck like he's he's an analyst like he needs to be behind these monitors doing this job not leading people he's not a people leader yeah um which i think is really interesting that we're getting does he gets coaxed into them clapping uh yeah (laughs) again the other guy the real dickhead officer is the one who's like he delivers this speech because you know that that's the sort of guy that he is and he's like and now he is he wasn't prepared he wasn't expecting to have to deliver a speech he's grunts these are the 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 troops on the ground like he doesn't normally deal with them he deals with the analysts the people behind the monitors Mm -hmm. um and they don't respect him at all they don't give a shit about this guy um i'm looking forward to talking about episode three tomorrow i'm really excited um i like i like i like the way this is going the episodes are about this one was about 33 minutes Mm -hmm. but i think i even if you take out the previously on and the credits yeah it's about 30 minutes it's about, I think. about a half an hour but again it doesn't feel it doesn't feel slight it like it leaves me no. wanting more but yeah. it doesn't feel slight i think when we get to the end of episode so much three, dialogue packed in there yeah we'll get to the end of episode yeah. three and i'm hoping that it feels like a bit of an arc an act break um mm. so that the week wait for next week won't feel torturous but we'll yeah. see that's for tomorrow um, and yeah, we'll be back same time again tomorrow, uh, three yeah. thirty p.m. UK time, seven thirty a.m. West Coast I'll time. Pop that up real quick. There you go. Uh, go yeah, over to you YouTube, like and subscribe. Tell everyone if you're enjoying the show and you're talking about it online or you're talking to people, just tell them to go and subscribe to the show. Uh, that'd be really helpful. Just if you tell one person, if all of you tell one person, we would very much appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and then before we go, since it is the 18th anniversary of Lost, Lucha Johnny says, I've heard a lot about Lost lately and never watched it. Um, watch it. Watch Give it. it a shot. That's great. Um, and my suggestion is just, just pop in that first episode. Uh, first episode directed by J.J. Abrams, music Michael Giacchino. One of the best pilots um, ever made. One of the best pilots ever made. It's, it's a two it's a two part pilot. So you're mm-hmm. talking like an hour and a half, a little bit more. And then... Um, I just watch it. No expectations. Yep. Chances are um, it'll grab you the way it grabbed me because I'm not much of a TV watcher. Um, mm. I'm not, there's not a lot of TV shows that I like. Um, a French without, I watch Lost. Without Lost, it. neither of it. us would be doing this, I yeah. don't think. I think yeah. that's safe to say. So, um, yeah, we I, have a I don't, like build it. I don't want to build it up for you, but um, no, you might, you might but, not like it. I don't think it is yeah. for everyone. And a lot of people, mm. I don't like ever try and argue against people that don't like it because ever anyone can like and dislike whatever they like. But we, we love it and if you enjoy the conversation and you're enjoying the same sorts of stuff as we are chances are that you probably yeah. will like it yeah stevie says one of the easily one of the best pilots um so my backstory with lost is i had them um, the first two episodes dvr the pilot mm-hmm. um because my friend said you got to watch it so I, I i was waiting for her to get ready she was getting ready we're gonna go i don't know out to lunch or something i pop on the pilot and i watch the first half i stop it go back to the beginning when she was done getting ready i said dude you gotta watch this <laughs> so amazing me and, stevie, yeah, yeah. me and stevie started watching we watched the whole thing and then went out to lunch yeah. um so it was it's like i mean it's so it's so watchable that first okay. that first pilot episode so good i, I, I watch, watch it, it today. yeah i i watch it every now um, and then just like just that is great um, um yeah cool yeah all right uh i gotta get to work so we will see you guys all yeah. tomorrow um yeah, until then, uh, don't keep in to hate. Celebrate the love. Okay, here, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Because I felt, I was like, let's do this. I'm right on it. Because I'm never on the button hit when you say punch it. And I hit it so fast, you didn't say punch it. And then I felt bad. I'm like, wait, I can undo this. Okay. <laughs> We've never had that I before. Just, uh, I just, I was oh, so excited. Amazing. That's great. Uh, punch okay, it. Right. <laughs>